War is a financial transaction. Uh, kind of an interesting subject. I thought about this last night and I thought, you know, I need to make a video on that really quickly because of the current situation uh, with numerous wars going on. You have the Israel, you know, Iran situation, China, Taiwan, and Russia, Ukraine situation, three different fronts, and a multiple front war with a lot of nations involved typically will become a world war. So I believe World War III has already started, and right now they're just kind of moving things into position. And um, you have to understand it from a financial perspective. It's not about good guy versus bad guy. You know, the, the bad guys rose up and they attacked the good guys and the other good guys have to defend the, bad, uh, the good guy that's been attacked and the bad guys have to be taken down and he'll get his bad guy friends. And No, uh, that's not how it works. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a passage of scripture here uh, where the Lord Jesus Christ talks about this very issue. So let's go to the scriptures. We're in the book of Luke chapter 14. We'll begin in verse 31. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So there you have it. Jesus talks about a king having ten thousand men, and he has to consider whether his ten thousand can take on a, another king with twenty thousand. And so you have to look at the health of your troops, you have to look at your weapons, you have to look at resources, the, the lay of the land and everything else. Because as time has gone through, the, the history of man has been a, a history of warfare and um, I mean, it's just the way it is. You can get all starry-eyed and think, oh no, if we could just get rid of the Bible and Christianity, then we'd have a, a, a religion or something, you know, then we would have peace on the earth or something. No, you wouldn't, because uh, the worst killers in the 20th century were atheistic communists. You know, so uh, kind of ruins the whole theory there if you're an atheist, that religion is the cause of all war. It's not. Um, resources, that's what it's all about. You have people coming along and they say, um, a king comes along and he says, my population is growing. My people are very healthy. Hmm. What am I going to do? Pretty soon the land won't be able to contain all of my people. I better expand. I better go out and see about taking some other land and uh, so I can feed my people better. The problem is the other land is owned by another king and he's got more people than I do. Hmm, what can I do to gain an advantage over this other king? And um, all the civilized talk and everything of the modern world Oh, you know, we're here to, you know, promote peace and tolerance. And it's all just a bunch of smoke screens and, and lies to deceive people into thinking that leaders actually want peace when they don't. Leaders want uh, to be able to expand. That's why it's war is a financial transaction. And as a financial transaction, if you just look at just something that would be a financial type of a deal, we'll say you're interested in a car, okay? We go to the car dealership. You know what the car dealership is there to do? They're there to sell you a car. And uh, so you turn on the idiot box or, you know, tele or uh, internet or something. And here's your, you know, local car dealership. And they have a special little uh, commercial or a little catchy little tune or some kind of a thing or whatever else to try to get you in to sell you a vehicle. And you go in there and there's a nice showroom that's built, you know, with, nice sports car there in the in the lobby and whatever it's all sales you see what i'm saying um and they want to get you into that they want to convince you that you can afford this vehicle and that it's a wise decision and i think you made a very good move sir and we're going to give you a special deal just you know today only and the whole thing that's what they're doing right now they're trying to convince people that there's the poor oppressed people of ukraine need our help and our finances and we need to bankrupt our nation in order to you know keep the war effort going you know the military industrial complex and so they're going to have to sell this war and quite frankly america has been trying to get uh, russia to attack america for a long time so that they could justify 
a new war effort. And um, Russia hasn't been doing it because Russia very wisely is looking and seeing all the internal fighting within America and they're saying, we can just kind of stand back and let America collapse on its own. We don't even have to fire a shot. And, uh, you know, let the economy crash and then the people will kill each other instead of trying to use their guns against us, against a foreign invading army. I mean, you know, and I've had people say, oh, that's ridiculous, you know, whatever else. And, you know, America can protect us. America couldn't protect, you know, the country against a balloon from China, <laughs> some kind of a surveillance balloon or whatever, or, you know, floating over the country. And what do we do? I don't know what to do, you know, and I'm supposed to give up my guns. I, I should trust the government. Uh, they'll protect me. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> if anything, I'd like to have more. But uh, that's another issue, isn't it? But my point I'm trying to make here is you always have to look at war as a financial transaction that they want to market it to you and sell you on the idea of it's very important that we go to this new war, that we uh, can that way. Well, it's not about expanding. It's just we're trying to preserve freedom and protect, you know, peace and whatever else. And... Uh, I saw this um, uh, anthem for the Space Force or something, you know, the, the sixth branch of the military here in America or, or whatever we have now. Donald Trump, you know, created the thing, signed it into law and whatever. I don't know if it's into law or however you would say that. Signed it into existence. And they were talking about how that, you know, the world depends on us to preserve peace and security and and all this other stuff and that we're going to do it in space outer space now you know we'll we'll make our spaceships and we'll go flying around and we'll protect the the earth <laughs> you know, okay yeah yeah sure yeah i don't think the world depends on america to, to keep peace and security um i don't think so you study the wars and things and all the different provocations and all the stuff that america has been involved in uh, we're not preserving any kind of peace and security in the in the world that's ridiculous. But um, <clears throat> again, as a Christian, what should our response be to this whole issue? Well, you have to understand that uh, God will judge a nation with war. He does. God says, okay, this nation is very wicked. This nation is very evil. And I'm going to send or uh, start a war and these young people that reject me and that, that mock me and whatever else, I'm going to send them to war. And so uh, when you see things lining up, you see the secular world getting ready for World War III. And you see the fact that um, God needs to judge the world. Um, you start to realize, I think we're definitely going into it. So... But I just wanted to say this, this whole thing, because it lines up perfectly with the Lord Jesus Christ, with his words there, you know, that it's all about finances, it's all about money, it's about expanding resources. And you have to, to realize that. Do not fall for the propaganda. And um, if you're a young man and you get called to go to the World War III or whatever else, and there's no way that you can get out of it, well, you have to trust the Lord in that issue. Um, I don't know what to say. I've I've avoided different wars. Um, I remember the them trying to recruit me <clears throat> just to enter the military when I was in high school, and no, you know, I'm not interested in that. You know, I wanted to go out and I wanted to make money, and uh, I did during high school and after high school. So. But the Lord spared me from ever having to go to any kind of war type of a thing. But um, So, God can protect you no matter what. Just remember that. But I um, just thought I'd do a real quick video on that. Wanted to tie it into the scriptures. Because we're close. We are getting very close to World War III kicking off. Officially, it already has kicked off. But um, <clears throat> again, war uh, is necessary when the economy is stalling. 
And um, so we'll see what happens here. But uh, I guess that will be it. Need to get down to the office. We have a lot of things to bring out. Here comes a wild animal. Here he comes. I guess he's not going to attack me. It's my dog, if you don't know. So, another beautiful morning here, in northern Maine, and uh, excited to get some projects done and things. Um, built some more bookshelves yesterday, and uh, just a lot going on right now, as usual, as typical. Staying busy, have some big studies that I'm working on, and uh, so. I guess that will be it. I don't think there's any other points I want to make about this issue. I uh, just really felt compelled to talk about the uh, financial ex aspect of this whole war situation, the military industrial complex. Um, we're heading into a big one and uh, the world's population is very high right now so I believe the casualty rate is going to be a lot higher than anything else we've ever seen. I think the casualty rate of World War III is going to probably be the biggest loss ever in the history of man, uh, much bigger than World War II. And, uh, but that's how the finance system works too. Always seeking to um, one-up, so to speak, the other the ones in the past and things we'll do better we'll we'll have more death more suffering more money made so all right having to walk through the grass here it's a little bit wet right now this is the morning dew bird flying there but um, <clears throat> just trying to see if there's anything else I want to show here, but I guess not. I'll quit rambling now. So I'll see you all in upcoming videos. Please do keep us in your prayers. And thank you very much for watching.